Hello, everyone, um, and uh, thank you for taking some time off to uh, listen to um, um, me talk about uh, Trove, uh, OpenStack, and what we have planned in uh, Kilo. Um, just to give you a short introduction about myself, my name is Nikhil Manchanda, and I'm the uh, PTL for OpenStack Trove for Kilo. Um, and so we're just going to go through a short discussion on uh, what Trove is, what we achieved in the Juno milestone, and what we're planning uh, in the Kilo milestone. So let's get started. Next slide, please. So I thought to uh, kick off the, the discussion about Trove, I, I'd uh, talk a little bit about uh, what Trove is, give you guys a brief overview, and uh, um, uh, what better way to start that uh, than to reiterate the mission statement of Trove. So our mission statement basically states, uh, to provide scalable and reliable cloud database as a service, provisioning functionality for both relational and non-relational database engines, and to continue to improve the fully featured and extensible open source framework. Um, I'll, I'll touch upon a few key salient points um, that I've sort of highlighted in the slides. But um, overall, Trove is an open, a set of OpenStack services that lets you uh, make API calls to the cloud uh, and let you provision uh, different data stores of different types and also lets you manage those instances of those data stores that you provisioned um, so that um, uh, through the life cycle of the instance, it makes it easier for you to work with them. Um, so a few things that I do want to call out, uh, Trove specifically does provisioning. Um, it does not get into the business of um, uh, into the data plane at all. So if you, once the instance of that particular data store type is provisioned, um, your application can then talk to, the, in, to the, that particular instance using the data channel that that particular data store supports. So if you were using MySQL, for example, you would then use um, just MySQL over port 3306 to talk to that particular instance. So where Trove comes in is it helps you provision that particular MySQL instance, set up replication, for example, do backups, restores, and manage the life cycle of that instance. Um, I do also want to call out that Trove supports both relational and non-relational database engines, um, provisioning both of them. So there is support in Trove for MySQL and PostgreSQL for the relational side of things. And then we've also added support for uh, MongoDB, Cassandra, and Couchbase. So we do also support those non-relational databases. Um, we're also uh, completely extensible and open source. We're an integrated OpenStack project. And we are built on top of other OpenStack projects. So when you make a call to the Trove APIs, we rely on no OpenStack Compute Nova being able to provision the, the actual compute VMs, um, OpenStack uh, Cinder for block storage, um, um, OpenStack Swift for object storage for the backups, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, so just wanted to talk a little bit about Trove in Juno and give you guys an overview. Juno was a uh, very successful milestone for us. Uh, we had a lot of new uh, contributors contributing code. Uh, we had 322 different commits from 71 uh, contributors. We uh, were able to implement about 30 blueprints and fixed about 200 bugs. Uh, lots and lots of code reviews. Uh, thanks to all the folks in, um, in Trove who helped with the code reviews. And there were about uh, 66,000 168 total lines of code changed. Uh, if you're interested in getting um, more details on the statistics, uh, there's a couple of links there that you can look at. And if you're interested in uh, pulling the Juno release and looking into what exactly went into the Juno release in terms of bugs and blueprints, uh, you can visit the Launchpad page um, and, and you can get as detailed as you want to get about that. So, um, Without going into the details, though, I do want to give folks a little bit of an overview of all the things that we accomplished in Juno. And of those things, what we're still continuing to build on uh, and work on in Kilo. So uh, I'm going to talk a bit about that. One of the big things that we accomplished in Juno was support for Neutron. Uh, before Juno, Trove only supported uh, working on uh, Nova networking. So 
we added support for neutrons, and now when Trove actually spins up the, the Nova compute instance uh, underneath, it uh, supports the ability to pass through uh, NICs using, uh, say, network IDs or ports uh, to Nova. And then it also supports, Trove also supports creating security groups. So we've added su Neutron support for those as well. So once your database instance is created, um, Trove will now talk to Neutron and set up the appropriate sec security groups. And when you want to uh, change those security groups to allow or disallow certain ranges of IPs to connect to your database instance, uh, Trove will talk to Neutron to do that um, going forward from Juno if you have Neutron enabled in your environment. Um, as part of the Neutron support, what we also did was we made sure that um, we made the relevant Horizon uh, enhancements in the Trove dashboard uh, so that if Neutron was enabled and you were trying to create a Trove instance, it gives you the option to select which network you want your instance to be on or what ports you want to be attached to your instance. So uh, sort of um, Neutr enabled Neutron support through the system, so through through the back end, through the, through the uh, Python Trove client, and through the Horizon dashboard as well. Um, we also, in Juno, added support for replication um, for MySQL. And this was basically in the form of asynchronous MySQL master-slave replication uh, on creation. So when you create your new Trove instance, you can specify that uh, another Trove instance that was newly created or that's an existing Trove instance um, should be set up as a master. And this uh, instance that you're just creating should be set up as a slave. And so once you make that API call, Trove will take care of uh, creating the repl uh, replication account and setting up replication between the master and the slave. Um, as part of this work item, we also uh, and made sure that there was some ability for you to detach a slave from the master and um, cut off this replication in case, um, say, the master was down or for whatever reason you wanted to detach the slave and promote it to its own master, uh, you are, you're able to do that. Um, so this is something that we uh, were working on or had talked about working on pre-Juno. And uh, going forward to Kilo, we're continuing to make this more stable. And I'll talk a bit more about that when we reach our Kilo slides as well. We also added support for uh, clustered Trove instances in Juno. Uh, we have a new clustering API. And our initial implementation is uh, support for a MongoDB cluster. Uh, the new clustering API, we had a discussion during uh, the end of Ice House and uh, during the Juno Summit and uh, sort of got a very good feedback from, from users and operators and decided to implement that in Juno. So uh, we now have uh, the ability to spin up a MongoDB cluster. Um, and as part of this MongoDB cluster, not only do we spin up MongoDB nodes that are part of a replica set, but we also spin up a query router um, and a config server. So basically what that gives us is we can do uh, high availability through the replica sets. And we're also available to grow horizontally by adding uh, shards, new shards to your MongoDB cluster. Um, of course, when you provision the cluster, you get back an IP or a couple IPs to talk to your cluster. And this is configurable. And those are the IPs of the query routers. So you talk to them, and the query routers figure out um, which shard it actually needs to go talk to. And so all of that is transparent to you. And your application just needs those IPs to, to talk to the cluster. Um, we added, in Juno, we added some enhancements for configuration groups. Um, we added default configuration templates uh, on a per data store and version basis so that um, uh, you could now add different templates if you were deploying a different version of your data store. Where this gets interesting is, say, for example, you wanted to deploy both MySQL 5.5 and 5.6 in your environment, and your configuration template that you have for MySQL 5.6 needs to be different. So Trove now allows you to do that. Before, we only allowed you to, to uh, deploy those configuration templates on a per data store basis. But now you can break them up even on a per version basis. Um, you could also do configuration groups. So this is a feature that we enabled in Icehouse where you're able to override the, that default configuration and templates through the API, API programmatically by specifying uh, 
configuration parameters and grouping them and targeting those groups to certain instances. Um, so you're able to tar uh, target those parameters uh, to those instances on a per data store and per version level as well. Um, we also tightened up the validation for the values for those configuration params. So those are now backed by uh, a schema which tells it things like uh, what the min value for the param is or what the max value for the param is so that when users try to override their values, there's at least some sort of uh, uh, basic error checking that goes on there so that users are not shooting themselves in the foot by uh, specifying a value that doesn't make sense for that parameter. Um, we also had some data store improvements. Um, we added support, initial support for Postgres uh, and uh, also backup and restore for, for Couchbase. Um, and this is something that uh, we're, we're sort of trying to do on a, on a more um, frequent sort of basis where we sort of figure out where um, are the holes lie for different data stores and try to pass them up and make them so that we have backup and restore for not just MySQL or not just Couchbase or so on and so forth. So this has been an ongoing sort of <coughs> excuse me, uh, effort intro. And I'll talk to where we're trying to keep that effort going even through Kilo as we progress. Great. So that was some of the, the, the work that we got accomplished in Juno. I uh, want to talk about some of the, the work that we're looking forward to in Kilo and um, uh, some of the upcoming features and differences or um, um, focuses for Kilo. Um, one thing that I do want to mention uh, is that in Kilo, Trove is moving to uh, the whole specs process, like a lot of other open stack projects as well. Uh, in Juno, we did our blueprints through wiki pages, and we found out that that was getting really hard and cumbersome. Uh, we were having problems doing reviews just because uh, wiki pages um, that it were, are really hard to annotate and sort of go back and track changes, who said what, when, who made a change to the wiki page based on that comment things like that. And the other, the other reason we decided to switch as well was because um, using wiki pages, it was really hard to get feedback from ops and users. Um, we found that a lot of the, that feedback was happening through, through email and mechanisms outside of the wiki page, uh, which meant that everyone viewing the wiki page didn't really have the entire context of what was going on. So uh, like, like a lot of other OpenStack projects, we decided to move to doing specs using the same uh, code review process that we re use for reviewing code using Garrett. Um, and so the, the, there's just another rep repository for specs called Trove Specs, exactly where you'd expect it. And in order to propose a new spec, uh, you make a, um, a proposal Garrett patent with um, the, the information in your spec uh, in a particular format, and the template for that particular format is in the Trove spec repo. So it's easily available and you can take a look at it. Um, if you want more information about this um, spec lifecycle um, and how projects are using it, there's a wiki page and um, you can click on that for more information. So that out of the way, I wanted to talk about what exactly we're concentrating on in Kilo. Uh, I mentioned this briefly where um, going ahead with the, the plan that we had for data stores and um, marching down the path of making improvements to existing data stores that we already have and adding other uh, newer data stores. So we're adding initial or we're looking at adding initial implementation of at least a couple of other new data stores. We're looking at adding uh, CouchDB and Vertica. Um, we're looking at incremental improvements for existing data stores. I know there's folks working on uh, trying to get uh, backup and restore for Mongo um, and, and a few other pieces uh, so that, um, say, for example, Postgres support would be to the same level as MySQL support. Um, we're also looking to add an API to be able to fetch data store specific logs from instances. Where this becomes really uh, interesting and important is that uh, users run specific queries on their data stores and say something goes bad. Um, users now need to have a programmatic way of figuring out what went wrong. And since they don't have, in most scenarios, don't have actual 
SSH access to the instance, the only way of figuring that out is through the API. So the idea here being that they'd be able to get certain contents of those data store logs. Um, of course, this was, would be specified and allowed by the operator, um, such as the MySQL error log or the slow query log through programmatically through the Trove API. So they'd make an API call and they'd get part of the log back. Either as a response. We're still trying to figure out the exact details, whether that part of the log will be copied to Swift that they can download, or whether there's pieces of that log that would be streamed back as part of the response body. So, um, but it's something that we're looking at doing. <coughs> Excuse me. We're also looking at building on uh, the replication scenarios that we enabled in Juno. Um, we are going to add Horizon support for replication, where you'd be able to create a new instance. Um, uh, and specify that it's a, a replica of the previous one and detach the replica. So, so in Juno we added support for that, but that was just through the Trove clients, and now we're just going to close the loop and add Horizon support for that as well. Uh, we're also looking at um, improving replication uh, based on global transaction IDs. Uh, this is a new feature in MySQL 5.6, um, and as we're adding MySQL 5.6 to the list of supported data stores, uh, this is something that we're looking into to improve um, the, the async replication that we already have. Um, we're also looking to add support for failover. Um, so GTIDs do give you a bit more of an enhanced story when it comes to failover. And Trove has a method um, through Trove Heartbeats where we can monitor whether, what the state of your um, data store is. So we're looking to see how we can leverage that heartbeat information that we have to uh, failover from a master, slave, master instance to a slave instance, for example, or give you the tools so that you'd be able to set, that, set up that failover based on uh, certain timeouts that are configurable um, for your particular deployment of trolls. We're also looking to build out uh, the clustering support that we added. We added the clustering API, and we have support for MongoDB, uh, but there are folks interested in adding clustering support for other data stores out there. I know people, I know certain folks currently are working on getting uh, or talking through the design of how we'd uh, add Cassandra clusters to Trove, um, also how we'd add Vertica clusters to Trove, and uh, lots of folks are interested in uh, adding Galera support for clustering to Trove as well uh, through ExtraDB cluster. Um, so that, that, that's sort of some of the new features that we're looking at enabling in Kilo. Uh, apart from that, there's uh, uh, a lot of um, sort of housekeeping work and paying off technical debt that we want to accomplish and get done in Kilo. Um, some of it we're uh, pretty uh, strong and already well off, uh, well on the way to accomplish. We, uh, we've removed the third-party external deprecated Trove CI. So this was um, a third-party CI system that would run the Trove integration test in the functional tests, um, uh, but um, it was not done in the same manner that um, the OpenStack Infra uh, CI system was running the infra tests for a lot of the other projects. Uh, it was basically be the, the reason for this is basically it was set up before a lot of those infra building blocks were in place. But now that the infra building blocks are in place, um, we've gone ahead <coughs> and gotten rid of that deprecated true CI. And all of our functional and int tests are running on in the DevStack VM gate environment, uh, fully under OpenStack Infra. Uh, we're also working on cleaning a lot out, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of the deprecated Oslo incubator code that exists in the Trove code base, um, um, and and moving to the actual graduated Oslo modules. So an example of that would be switching to Oslo messaging for uh, RPC calls between the Trove components. Uh, instead of using just the, the combo code from Oslo Incubator that exists in Trove today. Um, Oslo messaging is just an example of one of those. There's a lot of other um, Tro uh, Oslo Incubator modules that we need to switch to using the Oslo graduated modules uh, for. <coughs> and um, this is still ongoing work. And, and I think while we can accomplish a, a big chunk of it in Kilo, it's, it's one of those things that we have to be vigilant of uh, staying on the ball and making sure that we're always uh, keeping on top of the changes going on in Oslo. So. Uh, another um, effort that we're making in Kilo to, to 
get better with some of the technical debt that we have is uh, adding initial support for upgrade testing uh, using Grenade. So a lot of you might be familiar with Grenade already. It's an uh, OpenStack uh, tool that we have that um, lets us basically run DevStack for a previous release, um, and then uh, use the Jabman provision some uh, resources, uh, go ahead, upgrade, up, upgrade DevStack to a new release, and then make, test and make sure that uh, the resources that were provisioned in the previous version uh, still continue to work as expected in the newer version. So um, we're working through adding uh, support for Trove to Grenade and, and making sure that we have uh, good upgrade tests uh, for Trove um, using Grenade as well uh, in Kilo. So. Um, one more thing that we're concentrating on is simplifying some of the ops uh, for Trove. Um, we, I had a lot of good conversations with uh, uh, ops folks and users uh, at, at the Kilo Summit, and one of the constant pieces of feedback, uh, consistent pieces of feedback that I heard from them is that it's, it's hard uh, to build Trove guest images today. And so uh, we're working on an easier way to build those Trove guest images up. Um, and uh, Essentially, the only way to do that today, or one of the one of the ways to do that today, is using uh, some of the older scripts, um, the Red Stack scripts when Trove existed as as Red Dwarf before, um, uh, which which are which is a bit convoluted and and, and difficult to parse and under, uh, understand. So we're working on uh, not not having to use Red Stack to do this and having a standalone way to just build the the Trove guest images without um, breaking into all of the of the beast that is Red Stack. So. Um, also working on getting documentation improvements going, not just for image building, uh, but also for um, uh, deploying Trove, uh, getting a better set of instructions out there that will help folks uh, give them an easier way uh, path to deploy Trove, and uh, also better documentation for getting started with Trove development. Um, so these <coughs> that's some of the, the, the fixes that we're working on from a documentation perspective. <coughs> and uh, excuse me, um, that, that's not all. We're, we're, we're a growing community. We're, we're open to ideas, open, and there's a lot of room for improvement. Uh, uh, frankly, there's always room for improvement. So uh, we're, we're, if you have ideas, please find us. Uh, you can find us at um, OpenStack Trove on Freenode on IRC. Um, and uh, just shoot someone a message. Uh, and there's, there's always new folks joining, uh, and uh, folks are very friendly on the IRC room or very receptive to feedback. So uh, drop us a line, say hi. Even if you don't have an idea right now and just want to say hi, you're welcome. Please, please come over and say hi. So um, uh, we're still growing, um, and the Trove project is growing as well. So um, we're, we're really receptive to new ideas. So please come along. Bye. Um, if you have any questions uh, specifically, you're always free to contact me. Um, you can reach me through IRC, Twitter, uh, Gmail. Um, all, all of those handles are the same. So Slicknick on IRC, at Slicknick uh, on Twitter, and Slicknick at gmail.com. So um, feel free to shoot me a, a, a message or contact me in any way. Um, and uh, looking forward to hearing from you. And uh, hope this. Uh, pre presentation and these slides were, were useful and informative um, and you gave you a good or better idea of uh, what, what Trove is and where Trove is going over the next six months in the Kilo timeframe. Thanks for watching. <laughs>